Welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for a special format today. Today is going we're going to be playing a format called Treasure Constructed. It's a format that's just here on Magic Arena for the weekend and we have some crazy decks to uh, try out with it. So basically it is regular best of one standard except at the beginning of your upkeep you get a treasure token that has sacrificed this treasure add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So there's a lot more mana than a normal game of Magic each turn both players get the treasure, so you can start by playing two mana cards on turn one, and so on. And also, it helps fix your mana, because you can add any mana with your treasure token. So, I wanted to try a five-color Legends deck with that. So, we have... I uh, kind of took, like, normal Bant Legends and switched up a little bit. Instead of Land War Elves, I'm going with Grow From The Ashes, because Grow From The Ashes can, can I don't know, fix our... I guess fix our mana some if we need that, but it also just, since you already have more mana, Land of War Elves isn't as, uh, isn't as important of having like that extra mana like right away on turn one because you, you're already going to go ahead and uh, be guaranteed to have it. But we have Grow from the Ashes to, to help ramp us, and then we have all of our different uh, good Planeswalkers and legendary creatures and everything like that. Um, even splashing Nicol Bolas in this Bant deck, because Nicol Bolas is just incredibly strong, of course. We also get to splash Ral and Vraska as well. And since we get extra mana and get a mana every single turn, I think Karn's Temporal Sundering's value goes up a ton. And so I'm playing four Karn's Temporal Sunderings to go with these different uh, Planeswalkers and everything. So we'll kind of see how that works out for them. So... There we go. That's that's what we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and give this a try. Uh, another card that I don't usually play in the Legends decks is Lavinia, but I feel like Lavinia could be pretty important in this format, where people will like use their treasures to cast a four mana instant on like turn two. Well, they can't do that if there's a Lavinia in play. I don't know. May not be really that worth it, but you want cheap Legends. Like we need two mana Legends so that sometimes like if we have eight mana, we could play like a like if we're just stuck with a Temporal Sundering in our hand, for example. And if we have eight mana, we can just play a Lavinia and then play a Temporal Sundering immediately kind of thing. So that's what I got. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Treasure constructed. All but two of our cards are legendary or lands. So there's Grow From the Ashes. What's the other one? I think... Isn't isn't Grow From the Ashes the only one? I think that's the only one. Grow Spiral. Yeah, that, that's true. I'm playing Grow Spirals, yeah. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, more ramp. Okay. All right, the opponent's going tap land, use the treasure. I kind of want to just play Bolas here. No, maybe I'll go grow from the ashes. Yeah, I'll go grow from the ashes. I have it, Night Owl, I have not played it yet. Actually ran out of time. I put it I put it last on two the last two streams and we ran out of time, so I actually have not played it yet. Yes, resolve. That's what the auto passing thing means. Deck needs I would like the thing to resolve. Desert X, thanks for resubbing there for the third month. I get these hype boats in the chat. Thank you very much. Gets our sub battle countdown down to eighty nine there. Mm 
Hmm. Pay life. Let's kick this. Oh yeah, revel and riches. Let's get blue and black. Hey, what's up, Jelly Tug? Our temporal blast will exile all of the all of the non-land permanents, including um. Including the treasures, uh, relic seeker is a problem. I make my own decision. Fight them, you maggots! That's that's not a legend. All right, so four. So I would have, I was going to be able to go Nicol Bolas plus Urza's Ruinous Blast here this this turn. Mister Previously, getting those hype boats going. Tier two sub. Thanks, Mister Previously. Tier 2 knocks down at 2 subs there, so it gets us down to 87. So basically... I could do that, but I'm going to wait a turn. So, because if I play Bolas and Blast, I exile, like, these three things. But they still have their Relic Seeker that just kills my Bolas, and then I'm in trouble. So instead, I'm going to wait a turn, because if I wait a turn, I can Bolus plus Temporal Sundering. And then untap and My Temporal Sundering again, and, you know, kind of go from there. All right, and here we go. This is where it's gonna get, get it gonna get crazy. Our opponent thinks that they're super far ahead. It's true, they are. They're not gonna be far ahead for long. Our opponent's like, "How could we lose? We have this Vraska at ten. All these things on the battlefield." I will take another turn and bounce this Vraska. Thank you. All right, good. Drew land. I think I just temporal sundering again. Yeah, to get another treasure. I might as well just bounce a token. All right, so I can go Val for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I could go Val for eight, or I could just blast. If I blast, they definitely cannot cast Relic Seeker next turn. So I could go like blast plus Karn. Hey, what's up, Skinny Fat Man? That's probably a pretty good play, Karn plus blast, and then have Val set up for next turn. You may regret that choice. I like making sure that my opponent cannot. Ooh, that's gonna eat my treasures though. It does eat my treasures, that's annoying. Mm, that's annoying. <laughs> so basically I like making sure they don't get to play Relic Seeker next turn and I get to untap before they play Relic Seeker and have those both in play. Oh right. I guess with the land they were gonna be able to. Yeah, never mind. They could have played Relic Seeker next turn. Oh well. That was still sweet. Opponent confirmed not legendary. Ha, 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 ha.
<laughs> that was that's some good clean magic right there. <laughs> Jolner says I need looks like I need to spend more money on arena to get a decent shuffler. Aw. Get stuck on two lands with my twenty seven land deck three fourths of the time. Man, that's terrible. Yeah, this isn't really best of one. I mean, it is, but it's not like just the best of one format. This is the treasure constructed format, which is crazy. I was not invited to be in the tournament, Sammy. Probably the same reason why everybody else who's not in the tournament is not in there. It's an invitational. I wasn't invited. All right, so we got turn one as Kanta. Not bad to have right away. Thanks, Salty. Nice, Oxy went. You got five wins your first try with Krasis Sultai. Yeah. Let's go. Hmm. Could see just putting this on top of the library, casting it this turn. I don't need to use a treasure for grow. Yeah, let's do this. Means we could we could kick grow next turn with like that extra treasure. Hmm. I mean, planeswalkers are good against control. I guess I could have got color, so I could have tried to play the Dove in this turn. I wasn't really focusing on trying to play the Dove in this turn, though, because I think our opponent had a counterspell there that they could have used. I didn't really want to use that treasure. Yeah, I'll take a row. So we don't know exactly what our opponent's doing here. Besides just kind of sitting back with a lot of cards. We're just going to be passing turn here and holding up Wrath Capacian for if our opponent taps out. We'll flash in a Wrath and probably flash in a Dovin as well. Yes, treasures definitely help Esper Control. Esper Control is a deck that wants to have a lot of mana. It really helps them with like Chemist's Insights and things like that. I think Control decks are what... Like, decks that can use a lot of mana are what, you know benefit the most, and Control X can certainly do that. They still have their three treasures available. If they want to absorb this, they have to use all three of their treasures. Let's add this battle to your record of no, bad fat, decisions. Um. So yeah, basically for Esper, you'd want to play more Chemister's Insights and I don't know, that five mana Scry three thing. More, more things like discovery. You want to, you know, get more card draw. 
Uh, that's how you can use the treasures very well. And yeah, ma a card like Mastermind's Acquisition goes up in value quite a bit with treasures. This is just a small example of my genius. I hadn't really thought about a Revel, Revel and Riches deck for this format. Are you kidding me? That's some crap. Alright, let's flash in this Tristani. Settle, settle would, of course, be really annoying. How many, how many Shalai's do I have here? Just one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can Druidic Vow for seven. Look for Shalai. Man, Immortal Sun is so good against me. So I need I need Karn's Temporal Sundering. The problem with Kamal's Druidic Vow there for to look for Shalai is that they can just untap and Kaya's Wrath. And it's, you know, really bad for us. Yeah, Mortal Sun is, is a killer. We need to find Karn's Temporal Sundering. Unfortunately, we can't find that with Vow. So that's the card we need to draw. Dang. I don't. I don't think we can win this. I have to click OK to a lot of things. Yeah, I really like these these three D cards. Uh, I think I think they are uh, really nice looking and everything. And yeah, I like them a ton. Hmm. I guess I can just vow for nine. I don't want to vow in response to the Kaya's Wrath, because my creatures will die to the Kaya's Wrath. I 
All right, that was a that was a good vow for us though. Good Val because there's no no Karn's Temporal Sundering, so we still have the four of those, and we haven't, you know, that was know nine cards that were not Karn's Temporal Sundering, so that's good. Just a bunch of land drops. Because Temporal Sundering to bounce the Immortal Sun is. I really like to see here. Unfortunately, we don't have like a way to get rid of it for good. And the next turn they just get to play Immortal Sun and then I think we die. Oh wait, we'll have all of our Planeswalkers though in play to do stuff with, so that's true. Every problem. All right, let's find solution. more Sunderings. Let's start by taking you out of the equation. All right, so look for Sunderings. Choose wisely, because the other one's going bye-bye. Let's skip to the good part. Um, what are you supposed to do? I guess you make a Thopter. More mana. All right, thundering. Well, let's see what the wind blows in. Thundering. No time for a break. Hmm. Trying to find more of those. And we can draw th draw two now. We have the two treasures and the Thopter. I know what must be done. There we go, there's another one. There's another one. Uh one, two, three, four. I'm one mana short. Contraptions have their uses. How many different planeswalkers are in the deck? Uh, these four that you see here, the Karn and uh, Vraska and uh, Nicol Bolas flipped. Choose wisely, because the other one's going bye-bye. Hmm. You know what? I don't really want to play I'm Druidic Bow, because we'll just mill out. We'll likely mill out. Brilliance comes easily to me. It's the small things that matter. Back to that games, turn one land award, turn two Registrar Alpha. <laughs> That's pretty good.
This this game wasn't looking good for us for a little bit, but we found the temporal sundering, our first one, and then that's off to the races from there. There we go. Opponent scoops it up. We're going to be able to ultimate our Ral. All right, 2 and 0. Five color legends. I like it. So we need to obviously find something to do with all of our mana, but that's what Search Rose Cancer can do. It helps us find cards to play. Four one with mono green ramp. Nice. Haberdashed. Good luck the last round. Prowl Harpooner. We ain't got no flyers over here. Do I want to do I want to use this treasure token or not? Like I have to shock to play this if I don't use treasure. Yeah, I guess I do that. Next turn I can kick grow from the ashes. Or I can play bolus and and then transform it the next turn. Hey, Mike. Hello, hello. We're having some fun tonight with some treasure constructed. We're playing a five color legends deck where we played against an Esper Acuity deck last round and it looked really bad for us with our opponent having Immortal Sun, like they went in Mastermind's Acquisition for Immortal Sun, but still just barely got there. Do I want to flip Bolas next turn? It's the real question. Let's just cast this girl from the ashes. Do I want to cast another another grow from the ashes? That's a good question. So right now it's one, two, three, four, five, six. This would be land number seven. The next turn we'd have eight. We have eight next turn either way. Hmm. We're gonna be dying here pretty soon. We're gonna be dying here pretty soon. I don't think casting that other girl from the ashes is worth it though. Nice, you went 5 1 with 5 color reanimator. Awesome. Do I have any good Abzan lists? Not really. No, Abzan is like a color combination I haven't really played too much. The times I've tried Abzan, it's just felt like a worse soul tie. All 
right, so let's get these last two basics before we draw them like we did that last turn. Get those out of here. And then hopefully they don't kill my bolus and we get to untap and draw Kamal's Juridic Vow. We could Vow for 10. I'll also take Urza's Ruinous Blast. There you go, playing some Commander at Casey's. Nice. Two and one. Could have played Bolas like the previous turn and have it get lightning striked instead of casting like that the the first girl from the ashes. All right, I like this one. Oh, I didn't put any, any sleeves on my deck. Another Dovin Security deck. So remember, we cannot play. We cannot play the Karn's Temporal Sunderings until we have a, a Legend in play. I would like if my opponent taps out. Like if they so like basically they for tapping out they'd have to play like Teferi, I guess. Just pretty likely they counter this, but oh well. This is where we draw the thing that punishes them for countering that. Dang it, we didn't do that. We didn't act the two-part plan. Part one was solid. We didn't we didn't top deck the, the part two. Last time we played against the Acuity deck, they did not have any counter spells. It made life a lot easier. Uh, I think I have 26 lands in the deck. Because, yeah, we have like a lot of cards that get lands and stuff, too. Ooh. No counter spell. 
Draw a legend, please. Any legend? Legend? Well, I guess that's a legend. Uh, whatever. Not getting really good use out of these temporal thunderings. There we go. Let's hold that thought. Hey, what's up, Epic Linearchy? All right, come on, Druidic Vow. Yeah, if we draw a Druidic Vow, could be huge. Of course, we get two draws a turn. We are completely out mana manaing our opponent. All right, Relic Seeker is pretty cool. Keep up the pace. Ooh, Tezzeret's pretty cool, too. I'll take them both. Play Tezzeret first, draw two, while we have the three treasures. Valmishra with the Twitch Prime sub. Resub in here for the second month in a row. Let's get some hype votes in the chat for Valmishra. Thank you kindly. All right, let's go black. Vraska. Stand aside. Stand back, Rito. I'll destroy all that you hold precious. Need more treasures. All right, this goes down to eighty-six. Getting the sub battle countdown down. Hey, yeah, doing really good this weekend. I am doing just shorter streams this weekend because of the Mythic Invitational. So I'll be here from 7 to 10 uh, at night this weekend instead of the normal 3 to 10 time. Eastern Standard Time, that is. Ooh. Draw two. Course. That one's good. You know what? I'm not done yet. Yeah, I just I just watched basically I just watched a whole lot of baseball yesterday. Alright. Opponent can't handle all those planeswalkers. We found a Teferi. Teferi found us Tezzeret and Vraska. And we are three and one. Yeah, but it was a really nice relaxing day. Sitting back, watched a bunch of baseball yesterday. Even the Mavs were playing last night, so I watched a, a basketball game too. It was just an awesome sports day. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm nice and refreshed today. Hey, Colonial JD, happy Friday. There is cosmetic unlock in the treasure event. Yes, you can get a skewer the critics if you just win one, and if you get to the five wins, you get Chemister's Insight. So that's what we're seeing if we can get the chemistry's insight here. We have we have won a match, so we already got the skewer, but I'm gonna try to get chemistry's insight. I'm actually a Rangers fan. So yeah, you're a Cubs fan, so yeah, your team beat up my team really bad. I know that we aren't uh, very good this year. Where's my hello? Hello. So it's all good. I was hoping that Mike Miner was going to do a little better, though. I had him, have him on one of my two fantasy teams. 
And so he was doing great until the fifth inning when he started getting shelled. And so that hurt. Cool. Draft Compassion is like one of those cards you love. Nice. Immortality is worth Ooh. BG Zombies. I like it. Get squeamish on me. Ow. Indestructible? As long as you control that treasure. Better hope I don't get rid of that treasure, opponent. Get to have that specific treasure. So I don't want my Lyra to die, so I want to play the Shalai first to protect the Lyra. Shalai is still four life link next turn. Attacking that we can attack in at Lil's. Is this thing a zombie? It is a zombie, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Looks like our opponent likes to play black green decks. <laughs> yeah, we're doing crazy things on the treasure event. Absolutely. I did. Yep, I have Lavinia in, in here. Uh, other way, yeah. Yeah, you have the L, the N and the V switched. Wow, they really like this Cry of the Carnarium in their zombie deck. That's their third one. We can't really block here. Rise. Because it is indestructible, so even though we have first strike, uh, their creature still doesn't die, so it still deals the damage to Lyra. How are we doing over here? Two? Two instants of sorceries? All right, Ral's not doing a whole lot for us. As far as minus-wise. Next turn, we do get to Druidic Vow for six, though. I can also just activate Shalai and make Lyra a 6-6 six, six, uh, first strike thing. And 6-6, six, six, of course, can block Lich. It's not Death Touch, just Indestructible. So do I want to do that? I guess it does make Shalai a 5-6 also. So there's both, like, they just can't get through. That's probably my best play. Death touch? Ugh. Rebel, 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 rebel. They should block, or should they attack with Molder Hulk? I guess maybe, yeah, they should probably attack with Molder Hulk there. Oh, well. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. There it is. All right, so blue, red, red. 
Because remember, this, this exile is all of our treasures, so we just have to play this thing. Always nice to get out of the lab. It's gonna exile all of them. All right, smart play, smart play. Hope we get something good. Um, kind of want to take the land. Make Kamal's Juridic Vow bigger. I'm a little ways away from casting that Nicol Wolf anyway. Discmaster with that resub here. Welcome back, Discmaster. Discmaster. You are amazing. Sub battle countdown. Down to 85. So we're looking at uh, Druidic Vow for six again. Let's tick up and well, let's see what the wind blows in. I should probably just take the Tristani. I'm not doing a very good job of casting these Druidic Vows. I, I shouldn't have taken this body. I should just take the land and cast this Druidic Vow. That's way more fun, is casting Druidic Vow. I kind of wouldn't mind if my opponent finds a removal spell for Lyra so they don't concede right now. Heck yeah, your MeUndies arrived today. Awesome. You have to try them on tomorrow. Let me know how, if you like them and, and everything. Yeah, do you think they're three times as soft as cotton? I was just wearing mine yesterday. No, we didn't even get to Vow. I should not have played Tristani. Ugh. Okay, final boss time. We're four and one. We got to get this win so we unlock the Chemister's Insight as well. Can we do it? I didn't see what our opponent did with the Molder Hulk if they declined or not. I, I didn't see it, honestly. All right. Five color legends, you can do it. <laughs> Five color Esper. It's Esper control with Nicol Bolas and Hydroid Crisis. Because Esper control needs some good creatures. Yeah, that's why it's called Five color Esper. Right, this hand looks pretty good. Hello. 
Nice, good job, Math Goodwill. You went 5-0 with Super Friends. Way to go. Yeah, the event is free. And you only get... You only get something for going... Uh, um, you, you have to get one win to get a... Intercept. So if you get one win, you get a ske Skewer of the Critics. And if you get five wins, you get a Chemist's Insight. So if we lose this, we're 4-2 and we just get our uh, Skewer of the Critics. I'd like to draw a Lyra. Lyra would be pretty good. We can play Shalai next turn. Or, honestly, Urza's Ruinous Blast is our best draw. That would be a card I want to draw the most. Ow. That's not bad. That's not bad. Uh, so, question is, for a person who wants to get back into the magic scene, would you recommend MTGO or Arena? I guess it kind of depends on the format, because, you know, with Arena, you can't play Modern and Legacy, specifically Modern. So if, you, if, you're, some, if you're somewhere where you want to play a lot of Modern... You know, you have to be doing magic online, but if not, if you if you're just wanting to play standard and everything, I would definitely recommend Arena. And I think that uh, Arena is just continuing to grow to grow and everything where Magic Online isn't really. Um. So yeah, I would definitely definitely Arena if you if it's just standard. If but if you want like you know if you want want to play modern, you got to go with Magic Online, and that's not. And that's not going anywhere. Uh, I think this is a pretty decent time to buy into Modern on Magic Online. Uh, it's pretty cheap overall. Because Arena is just a, a new program that's still in beta and everything. And there are tens of thousands of cards in the older formats and trying to get... Trying to have everything work is is a big problem. Trying to have all of like the weird interactions and, and things that cards can do and everything and program everything to work with each other. It's it's a huge undertaking if they would just add in modern and therefore they have not. Yeah, a whole lot of coding and stuff. So if am I going with I guess I'm going Tez. Yeah, I think we have to go Tez. Ral's just not going to really kill anything important. Shall we begin? A master builds with ease. All right, hope our opponent doesn't have any interaction for us. Or like, hope, hoping we get to block here, get to chump the deeper lead and with the one one and block something else as well. That's not good. Hopefully no more tricksters. Just just give me another turn. Let me temporal sundering. Just give me another turn. Ugh. I guess I was dead before that, wasn't I? I guess I was dead before that. Now I'm just even more dead. Because, yeah, even before this card, I was taking six. So sad. We went turn two Shalai, turn three Tezzeret, and we died. Because remember, turn one we played the Growth Spiral. So <laughs> that's how fast we died. We had Shalai on turn two, and then Tezzeret on turn three, and I didn't even get a turn four. <laughs> that's this format. That was a very fast final boss. So we got the skewer of the critics. I already had that one, but yeah. Oh, I didn't get the five wins there. Oh, well, still had a lot of fun. Uh, that, that was definitely a fun deck to play. So there we go. That's the five color legends deck with the treasure format.
Uh, gonna go ahead and, and try. We got the two other decks to play here, and you know maybe we'll make another deck after that. But there we go. That's uh, treasure. Uh, treasure constructed five color legends.